Howdy everyone, today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite Frank Miller stories. This has to be Electra's Omnibus by Frank Miller and Bill Sizewicks. This story does so much not only to draw you in as a reader, but also able, if you've read a lot of Frank's material, you can see a lot of the stuff that is adapted that's inside of this that are into his other stories, which we'll be talking about that a little bit later when we're breaking the story on down a little bit. First, I just want to show you the beautiful artwork they got on this. Um, this was part of the printings that came out with the Daredevil Omnibus, real quick. People will be familiar with Frank's other works such as this. Um, these are kind of like a must have for any Daredevil fan. Mine is a little destroyed up here. Yes, I know. But even the artwork inside of the hardcover itself is very similar to the way they have it in the inside of the book here. It's a beautiful, beautiful hardcover right here with Electra's eyeballs and of course a nice little drawing of her down here. I love the nice, not really cherry red that this book has, but a beautiful, nice gloss to it. Come along the spine, you do have a little bit of Electra down here, and I like the way the artwork is in this storyline. It really helps explain the story of how it really is, and we'll explain that a little bit more in just a second here. But real quick here, this story does collect Electra Assassin 1 through 8, Electra Lives Again, which has been retconned, and Bizarre Adventures 28 and What If 35. Uh, what If 35 is a really interesting one. I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, that is What If uh, Electra had survived the whole incident with Bullseye. Great issue if you guys have not read that one. I highly suggest anyone to read it. But this story starts off interesting. Yeah, you get a little bit of stuff here. and But the real main part of the story is that Electra Assassin 1 through 8. It is a very chunky read with each issue here. I mean, this is all of issue 1 itself. About right. Oh, this is what if Electra had lived. I mean, hadn't died. Sorry, we're going to go through this together. That literally is well, one whole issue here. So you're definitely getting a lot to read with here, but real quick before anything else. If you guys have the Electra or Daredevil Omnibus, I highly recommend you guys to read the introductions for both of these. It is very beautiful. It gives you a lot of history on how much these characters meant to Frank and how what it meant in the time frame. Because during this, there you have the comics code, and when he was writing Daredevil, this was a story that Frank wanted to push the boundaries. Daredevil was one of those characters where he he wanted that chance. It was his first chance at Marvel. There were a lot there were a lot of things that Frank did to get this to work the way it did. And that's what I love the Daredevil Omnibus we showed so much because you can even see in the pages when he fully takes over as the writer and uh, main artist for that, you can tell the aggression that comes in more when he doesn't have to be held in by other writers that are held in by certain things. Frank had a certain thing. He hated the comics code. He wanted to push comics more that were more aggressive and violent, and that's what Daredevil was during that time frame, especially reading that stuff, and you get that reading this. And in the introduction... They explain a lot of that's where I'm trying to get with this is that they understand the way that Frank wrote uh, the stuff with Electra and her dying, obviously. So you couldn't just totally retcon that stuff and everything. And they didn't want to do that. So Frank had an idea and that was Electra Assassin. And what makes this so incredible is this it's basically like you're going through Electra's mind the entire time. You're getting told a story. You're finding out about the first time she meets Nick Fury. I mean, the love relationship in this that you're fighting with. Um, the way I've been liking to explain this story, the way it is, without spoiling too much, is this is a lot. And I mean almost identical to the Ronin storyline that Frank Miller has wrote. Um, let me pull that over here real quick to show you guys. Um, not only that, but even the way the artwork is displayed in this book, it is very similar, the tones for this, because if you remember in Ronin, somewhat of the storyline is you have a man that is being tortured and basically worked on and dreaming of this incredible, incredible life. Um, obviously, there's more to it to the run situation, but I'm just trying not to spoil too much for a new reader that comes in and tries to read this. This is very similar for the layout of Ronin 
when it came to this. Obviously, Ronan came first, so it is very possible that Frank Miller wanted to add um, the same type of elements when it came to... Sorry about that, guys. Electra's assassin here. Um, what makes this really awesome as well is you're having Nick Fury hunt down Electra to show her, um, to show everyone of how incredibly dangerous she is, how much that everyone fears her. Um, she isn't a force to be reckoned with because she does have her own set of powers. Being part of the hand and what the hand did to her, you you find out that she is not fully human. And um, other parts of the story, you find out a lot about her backstory, a lot about her life. And it makes you fall in love with the character more, being a fan of Daredevil, especially with the stuff with Chip, Chip Zdarsky and finding out when she becomes Daredevil and all the stuff that she had to become to overcome the killer she was. Especially reading Electra's Assassin, you'll, you'll appreciate it more of how far she came from being a killer to being, obviously having to run the mantle of the daredevil and it's it's extremely beautiful the artwork in here helps you understand that this is you being inside of Electra's head and it, it the artwork explains that it's very sporadic it's never consistent throughout the whole the whole entire story that Electra is giving I'm not going to say it's not consistent because it is it's not consistent with each story she is telling uh because each each individual issue takes you deeper and deeper into Electra's mind and where she's trying to get this. And there's other bits and pieces that will help you pinpoint this together. Um, it's a very dark, brutal, messed up storyline, um, but it is very, very beautiful at the same time. Frank Miller does such a beautiful job explaining how emotional of a character Electra is. And I hope you guys agree with me. Um, if you guys are confident about this, um, seeing that same stuff here. And when I was reading this the entire time, all I could think of is, oh my gosh, all I see is Ronan. And because when she finally breaks out of Hydra, or uh, yeah, Hydra's mind, because you find out the stuff with S.H.I.E.L.D. and everything, um, it gets crazy. It gets emotional. The artwork in here expresses such an, uh, an incredible tone. I mean, it's these very bright colors of reds and blues and whites, the... You can feel almost the stabs and the hits. It, it's it's incredible, and it makes you really appreciate just the way that Frank Miller is able to tell a story, if that makes sense. Throughout this story, too, you get beautiful bits of extras in here. Here's Electra Saga number two, 1984, Electra Saga number one cover. I mean, they definitely don't cheap out when it comes to the extras that are inside of this book. You get a decent chunk in here, some pinups of Electra here. I love the design they went with her back in the day. Uh, I really hope with Born Again we get something. Um, and he has a huge comic collector in love pieces of art. I can not wait one day to get my hands on an original Frank Miller piece. Uh, these are just such beautiful, beautiful art pieces by Bill Sizenwicks. I mean, it's, his artwork is just incredible. These paintings are just a work of a work of art, and it really helps you. Oh, I love that trade paperback cover. Really beautiful. These pinups just really scream. Uh, got some nice, beautiful dark art here and some notes as well. Uh, so you definitely get a lot of bang for your buck with this book. Being at a $100 cover price, obviously you can find this at other uh, comic retailers for most likely a lot cheaper. Uh, this is definitely a book I wouldn't suggest anyone to sleep on that hasn't read it. For fans of Daredevil, just pick it up, read it. You guys can easily get through this in a day. Not a chunky omnibus whatsoever. I mean, look how thin that is. Easily can get through it. I was able to get through it for a day um, just with the crazy move and everything. Just wasn't able to... Um, review it for these last couple of years has been kind of just sitting on my shelf. Uh, so, but yeah, this is definitely one I suggest anyone to read. You guys won't be disappointed with that Electro Assassin. And also having it in that Omnibus hardcover format never disappoints. But you all have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.